Shalom. Shalom. 
anything different tonight? <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad to welcome many of you who come each week, and, and many of you come as often as you're able, some who are joining us for the first time, and we're so grateful that you're here with us. We hope that you'll find easy access to our service. You'll see our, our seat door in your seat pocket, uh, either underneath your seat or right in front of you. It's a very friendly prayer book. You will find each of our passages can be um, discovered in the Hebrew, in the transliteration, in the English, or in a poetic version of our passages as well. However and wherever you can access our, our Sidur and our service, please join us when and how you feel most comfortable before we tuck right in to the beauty of this particular Shabbat and this beautiful summer day and this lack of oppressive heat. <laughs> I ask you please to actually in earnest, if you have to stand up or swivel a little, say hi to somebody, introduce yourself to someone who you've not yet met, tell them your name, wish them a Shabbat Shalom. We are so very blessed in this congregation to be able to go from strength to strength, from the wonderful and beautiful voice of Elise for so many years that has graced this space and so many of our hearts, to this new beginning with Cantor Braun. I'm so glad that so many could be here this morning during the summer months. And Cantor Braun, it has been a long time. We actually overlapped in seminary and uh, are delighted to find ourselves in this space at this time together to be working and serving together. And we welcome you to this new chapter in the life of our congregation and certainly in the journey of your cantorate. We stand with you. We offer you the warmest of welcomes and thanksgiving at this most sacred time in our congregations going forward. We welcome you as you bring your voice to this congregation as its new cantor, as its first cantor. And we sing, and when we sing God's praises, we open our hearts to the possibility we know of spiritual renewal, and we pray that your gift of music and spirit help us to sing new songs to God. Inspire us for new and full spiritual fulfillment and enrichment and help us find deeper meaning in the prayers and the praises and the songs of our heart. And so you will find a new rhythm in Cantor Braun and you will find some new, new tunes and some new melodies and some new ways along as we, uh, as, as we grow and go in our congregation. Try it. 
and then try it again, and then try it a third time. And if you still don't like it, try it one more time. <laughs> it's how we grow, right? It's how we grow our neshama. It's how we grow our spirit and our prayer life. So not always to be comfortable, but to, to stretch a little bit spiritually. And I know, as I did from our opening songs and our opening nigun, that this will uh, be an act of love for all of us. So we welcome you warmly and are, are excited to continue with Thank you. you. Our service begins on page 121. We invite Jan Jane Amstey to, to uh, kindle the Shabbat lights as we begin page 121. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, in our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we, in our own day, be among those who kindle light. Baruch Atarunai Elohinu Melech Alam, Asher Kitshanu V'mitzvotav V'tzivanu, L'chadik Ner Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hails us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Baruch Atarunai Elohinu Melech Alam, Asher Kitshanu V'mitzvotav, Please join us as we turn to page 123 and we all of us rise for Kiddush, page 123. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Perifat HaFen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Gereshanu B'mitzvotov Meratzav Anu V'Shabbat Kodshu B'Yahava Uvratzon Inhilanu Zikaro L'Mamase Please be seated. Let's continue praying on page 124 and let's share this in responsive paragraphs. May the door of the synagogue be wide enough to receive all who hunger for love and all who are lonely for friendship. May the door of the synagogue be narrow enough to shut out pettiness and pride, envy and enmity. May it be too high to admit complacency, selfishness, and harshness. Let us continue on page 128. We will sing Hine Matov 
Umanayim, how good and how pleasant it is for us all to be together with a special welcome and a warm welcome to all of our guests who are here as part of the Ramim delegation. We are so glad that you could be with us this evening for this particular Shabbat, and we are especially glad to be able to sing and say Hine Matov. This is our sister city in, in Modi'in, Israel. You will meet some of our guests after. Give a wave if you're here from Modi'in. Just give a wave. And everybody from Temple Sinai, give a wave back. <laughs> How good, how pleasant, how wonderful it is for brothers and sisters to dwell and be together. Page 128. <laughs> just got cozy in your seats and just settled into that Shabbat ease and that Shabbat rest and that Shabbat delight that comes as it does each week, whether we're expecting it or not, it comes and it is for us, it is ours for the taking. I invite you to stay cozy and comfortable in your seats as you turn to page 138 until we get to the last verse of L'cha Dodi, where we will, all of us, it is our custom to sing verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. At verse 9, we will, all of us, rise, all of us who are able, rise, turn to the back entrance, and greet the Sabbath bride. Page 138. <laughs> Ikrakala, 
can please be seated. Bottom of page 145 is where we continue. Entrances to holiness are everywhere. The possibility of ascent is all the time, even at unlikely times and through unlikely places. There is no place on earth without the presence. together as we all of us rise for our call to worship for the Barhu, page Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidivaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bochma Poteach Sha'arim, Vivituna Meshane Itim, Machalif Et Asmanim, Misader Et Akochavim, Bemishmarote and Barakia, Pirzono, Bore Yom Valila, Golel Or Mibne Hoshek, Bahoshek Mibne Or, Umaavir Yom Umevi Laila, Umavdir ben yom uven laila, Adonai tsevaot shemo, El chai vekayam tami, Yimloch alenu leolam vaed, Baruch ata Adonai, Hamaari aravi. Wisdom and wonder, passion and instruction, story and symbol, all these things your Torah gives to us, and the more we devote ourselves to it, the more it grows and gives. What could be a truer token of your abiding love than this holiest of your works and the living language that gives it form? Oh, hey,
please be seated. Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. Oh! <gasps> 
who keep Shabbat by calling it a delight will rejoice in Shabbat. We know that we are given a double portion of our soul, that everything, you've heard me say this before, everything should feel better and sound good better and taste better and look better. And you got to make me look better and sing loud. And you have to clap. We told Cantor Braun that this was a crazy alive congregation. <laughs> We are, we are reveling in the delight of, of this particular Shabbat and, and really so very thankful that, uh, that you are here, that you are trying something new, that you are trying something new, <laughs> that many of you who are joining us from Israel are trying something new and we're grateful that you're here as well. This is the part in our service, this is where we come to the tefillah, to the amidah, the, the spine of our service, where there is, in our tradition, in the Reform tradition, a combination of, of, uh, of prayers that we do um, mostly together and mostly aloud. Though if it is your custom to pray the Amidah silently, we certainly will welcome your custom here as well. It is for us beginning on page 164 as we all of us rise for the tefillah. Yeah, I get 
Hakadosh v'shim Hakadosh v'kedoshim b'chol yom yehalleluha sela baruch ata Adonai ha'el Hakadosh. And please, if it is your custom, please we invite you to be seated as we turn to page 173 together. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch ata Adonai, mikadesh hashabbat. Ratzei Adonai Eloheinu be'amcha Yisrael, utfilatam be'ahava tikabel, utihi l'ratzon tamid avodat Yisrael amecha, Baruch ata Adonai. God of goodness, we give thanks for the gift of life, wonder beyond words, for the awareness of soul, our light within, for the world around us so filled with beauty, for the richness of the earth, which day by day sustains us. For all these and more, we offer thanks. Baruch atah Adonai, hatov shimcha l'cha na'el l'hodot. Shalom Rahab al Israel Amcha Tassim Leolam Shalom Rahab al Israel Amcha Tassim Leolam Ki Atom El Chadon Lechol HaShalom Yes, 
take a, a few moments in silence, in prayer, in meditation. that at uh, our Get Some More Shabbat a couple of weeks ago when we paused for the silent meditation outside, there was a historically long train that went by. Do you remember this? For those who were here, it was so loud outside during our silent meditation. So I am, as I'm, as I'm praying and, and meditating silently right now um, and, and hearing some little voices in the congregation. I am reminded of, you know, that story of the little boy who sits in the back of the shul of the Beit Knesset who doesn't yet know how to pray and he just sits in the back reciting the Aleph Bet, right? He just says Aleph Bet, Gimel Dalet, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And, and somebody comes up to him irritated and says, what are you doing? You're disrupting us. We're, we're praying. Why, why are you just reciting the Aleph Bet? And this little boy says, I, I don't know how to pray yet, but I know these letters and I know that God can put them together for us, <laughs> right? So I am, I am thinking and, and sure that the little voices that we are hearing are, are giving them to God, right? And saying, God, put these, put these initial sounds together. These are the prayers from our heart. And, uh, and we're glad that there are always thankful. This, is, this particular service is, is billed as a family service, right? So we are, uh, we are sure that you're all part of the family and we are so glad when there are little voices part of our family as well. That was a right on, right? <laughs> 
So we turn, we turn from little voices, we turn from silence, we turn from song, and we direct our tefillah, we direct our prayers and our hearts and our thoughts to those who are struggling right now, those who for weakness of body, those for weakness of spirit, those who are struggling in any way, in all ways, are in our prayers right now. As in a moment on page 371, we will turn to the Mishaberach. But we gather all of those kavanot, all of those intentions and prayers for those who, who especially are in need right now. As we say, Mishaberach Avotenu Imotenu, Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov, Sarah Rivka, Rachel Valea, Hu Yivarech, Etacholim. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal, give strength and courage and sustain those who are struggling. This evening we are holding in prayer Jim Buran, Shana Esther Butt-Ruchel, Florence Sporn, Agnes Agee, Steve Brent, Barbara DiCario, Harav Adina Yehudit Bat yakov Valea, Mark Friedman, Patrick Dougherty, Jason Margolis, and Jeffrey Kirsch. And we are also holding, I'm sure like many of you who are watching the news, we are holding those teens and those responders in Thailand who are working tirelessly to allow those boys to come to to land and to freedom and they need so much more than our prayers but right now right here let's include them in our prayers for strength for compassion for enough of what they best need to be able to get those boys and and their coach out of that uh, that terrible circumstance and those terrible and escalating circumstance and we also hold in our prayers those who, who have no one to pray for them, but who are struggling, those in nursing homes, those in care facilities, those who are on the streets, those who are really in need right now. Let's gather those with the names of those who are in your hearts, in your lives. Please, as I look your way, if you have somebody to add to the Mishaberach list for healing, for wholeness, for strength, please, as I look your way, please share that name in English or in Hebrew or hold them in your, in your heart, please. May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived for enough courage, enough strength, and enough of what they most need. May God swiftly send them, where possible, complete renewal of body and spirit as we join <coughs> together in saying, Amen. Amen. I share this short story with you and invite you to put your kid cap on today. Put your hat on to be a child and there is, I, I think, I hope, a, an adult lesson as well. Once there was a wise king but a very old one. He had ruled for very many years and wanted to prepare his young son, the prince, to assume the kingship. And so he decided to send the prince on a journey. 
You are no longer a boy, my son, he said. It is time that you travel and that you look at other lands, at other kings and queens, and see how they rule, see how you can learn. Then I want you to come back and to tell me what you have seen, the king said. So the prince left and he journeyed for very many months, traveling with the king's trusted advisors. He stayed in different inns and different homes along the way, and he listened to people talk over their bread and their wine, and he listened in the marketplace, in the shook, as they haggled over the price of their chickens, and he saw lands that were amazing and prosperous and with people who worked hard, and then he saw other lands with beggars lining the streets, buildings in disrepair, and people openly stealing from one another. And fear was what he saw on those inhabitants' faces. In some lands, people were friendly to him. They were helpful and they were kind. In others, people shooed him away, and they were rude and short-tempered with him. And the prince tried to make sense of all of this, all of what he had seen and, as he, and what he had heard, but he couldn't decide in any definitive or clear way what caused one land to be different from another. So he returned home to his father, and he told the king, his father, what he had seen. And he shared with him his confusion as well. I'm glad you have observed so much, my son, said the king, for wisdom begins there. And you have seen how difficult it can be to make sense of it all. The king then ordered, and perhaps you have heard this before, but the king then ordered that some glasses be brought before him and to be brought before the prince, as well as a jar of very hot water and a jar of very cold water. And now the prince was even more bewildered than before. But father, he said, what do these glasses and these jars have to do with what I just witnessed on all my travels? and I will explain was what the, what the king said to his son. If we pour only the hot water into these glasses, they will, what will happen? They will break. And if we pour only exceedingly cold water into these glasses, they will also break. So the king said, we must be very careful to mix the hot water and just enough of the cold water so that the glasses remain whole and don't shatter. And it is so when you rule. You must with care mix the hot and the cold. You must mix justice and mercy and rule wisely. For if you only rule with justice and try to teach, try to treat each person as well as each incident in exactly the same way without weighing the circumstances, your land will be unforgiving, and hardships will definitely befall you within your borders. And if you rule only with mercy, forgiving each crime with no consequences for the wrong that the person may commit, there will be no law in your land, and no regard for the law, and there will be hardships for other reasons. <coughs> The strong, the bully, the greedy, the misguided will step over the weak, the humble, and the innocent, and there will be no one to protect them. You have seen lands with much poverty, with beggars on the streets, and thieving from one another, corrupt business dealings where greediness and selfishness abound, and these are the lands that are ruled without any regard for justice. And you have seen lands with no beggars, but where the people are unfriendly and stone-faced, and do not help the stranger, and are afraid to move one foot in front of the other. And these are the lands where they rule with no mercy. What you want for your kingdom is a land where people work hard and are prosperous, where they are friendly and help the stranger. And just as God made the heavens and the earth, God created mercy and justice for us to mix and use wisely. Listen to your people, my son, and act with these empty glasses and pitchers of hot and cold water in mind. And as we find ourselves now coming toward the very end of the book of Numbers in our Torah reading, our story picks up. Who knows our parsha this week? Who knows the name of our parsha this week? 
Pinchas, right? We are in the very, very end of our story in the book of Numbers. It's Moses is constantly being reminded that he will not be the one to lead his people into the promised land along with the vast majority of the Israelites who have left Egypt. It is a terribly upsetting time for them. A real fissure in their, in their leadership exists. And here in this Parsha, we find the second census of the people. We find a listing of who crossed first. And at the beginning of the book, at this time, almost all have died, we know, in the wilderness. And Joshua, one of two sole survivors, will be the one who leads our people forward. And this we know. It is, in our history, a pivotal time for our ancestors. And Joshua's selection as leader comes in the passage from this week's Parsha. And we hear these words. Moses speaks to God saying, let the eternal source of all, let the source of the breath of all flesh appoint someone over the community who shall go out before them and come in before them and who shall take them out and bring them in so that the eternal's community may not be like sheep that have no shepherd. And at God's instruction, Moses proceeds to lay his hands on Joshua's head. We have this transfer of leadership by the laying on of hands. It is how we are ordained with the laying on of hands, authorizing him to be the next leader. And Joshua is a familiar figure to many of us. We have seen him as Moses' second in command throughout. And you might also know, or perhaps you do not know, that he was actually not the only contender for this job. He was not only the one pick to be the leader. At the very beginning of this parsha, and at the end of the last one, we read in the story of Pinchas that Pinchas the priest was actually a zealot who killed an Israelite man and a Moabite woman, a Midianite woman, who he caught, we're told, having relations. The Talmud in particular shows deep ambivalence about Pinchas's vigilante justice, but in the Torah, he seems to be rewarded, and it is because of his actions, the actions of Pinchas, that the plague is stopped, that he stops a plague, and God gives him a covenant of peace, a brit, a, brit, a covenant of, uh, of, of peace. The Kotzka Rebbe, the Polish 19th century Rebbe, writes, when Moses saw how great Pinchas was, he was afraid that he would be chosen as the leader. But he was not pleased with the prospect of having such a zealot as the leader of the Jewish people. He therefore asked of God what the leader that the leader be a tolerant person and not a zealous one. Pinchas had too much zeal to be leader. The Midrash goes further noticing the, the unusual name by which God, Moses calls God in this passage. Source, God of the breath, literally breathes of all flesh, breaths of all flesh. Moses appeals to God's knowledge of the innate diversity of human beings and Moses requested of the blessed Holy One at the hour of his very death, imagine this, saying before God, master of the universe, the mind of each and every one is known before you, and none of them are the same as another's. When I am separated from them by death, I ask you please to set someone over them who will be patient with each and every one according to their uniqueness. Each and every one according to their uniqueness. And Moses calls upon God to choose a success for him, successor for him who will understand and respect the differences among people rather than a zealot like Pinchas whose instinct is to find the sinners and to kill them, to separate between us and them. And so we know. Pinchas models passionate leadership, but Moses is astute enough to see the risks. Someone so passionate will be, will be blinded to the needs of his flock and to the differences that make them whole. In contrast, God originally chose Moses as leader because he searched for a lamb, we know, who went astray and he showed his Rachmanus, right? He showed his compassion. Pinchas would bring a politics of division with his passion, and so although he is rewarded 
with his relationship with God, he is not destined to be the leader of our people. So we learn from our Parsha this week, just like we know from the king's son, the importance of a leader who is willing to take great care to mix the hot and the cold, the justice with the mercy. And we take our lessons from both this Parsha and from the king and his son. And we hope in these times as we move forward and that each of us leads in one way or another, whether at home or in our workplace or in our neighborhood or in our service, our service to the community, that we will remember to mix the right amount of the hot and the cold, the justice with the mercy. Say, can you hear it? And we go from that to asking any of those who have a birthday in July. Anybody have a July birthday? Anybody have a July birthday? If you do, come on up. Grown-ups especially. Yes, if you have anybody who's got a birthday in July, come up so that we can offer you a blessing. We're not going to card you on the way up, but if you have a July birthday, come on up. You are a unique group. And we say, Eloheinu ve'elohei avoteinu ve'imoteinu, O God who blessed our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. Bless all of those, all of you, whose birthdays we celebrate in this month. Bless them with an appreciation for this new stage in their lives, and may they draw deeply from the well of learning, growth, and deepening of spirit, carrying with them all that has given them meaning and joy to this day, opening new possibilities for sweetness and light in the days to come. Bless them with health and strength, with courage and deepening compassion for the world and for all who share in it. We say that, we hope, we pray that it will be until 100 and, at 120, right? That you will live many years of strength and wellness and peace and contentment. And we wish you only the very, very best and ask you to stay. And if you don't mind, we're going to ask you to share your birthday month with any of those who are under the age of 13. And parents can come up with their under age 13 year olds. We'd like to offer our children a blessing as well. So come on up if you have children under the age of 13. <coughs> we see you. <laughs> we see you and we heard you praying during the silent meditation. <laughs> And for those children who aren't yet comfortable to join us on the Bima, together with those who are celebrating their birthday this month, we offer God's, we offer God's <laughs> blessing to you, the trifle of benediction. <laughs> may God bless you and may God keep you. <laughs> may God's face be turned to you and may God be tender and kind with you. May you feel the fullness, the grace, the awe of God's presence all around you at every step, at every moment. And may you be blessed with wholeness, with contentment, and with peace. As we all together say, Amen. Mazel Tov. He's mesmer. And then actually, you can stay. And if we could, we would love those who are here as part of our Ramim group, along with your partners and along with those from Federation who are joining us tonight, to please join us on the Bima so that we can share the Shehachianu, that we can say thanks, God, for bringing us to this sacred season. If it is, if it is OK with you, come up with your partners, come up with your kids, and, uh, and we would. You're, 
And we would love to, uh, to, to warmly welcome you with the Shah Hianu, and we're, we're grateful. We're grateful. <laughs> How often do we get to say we have so many guests and so many friends and so many new friends and family members joining us. Klal Yisrael, we hear so often and too often about the tensions and we don't often enough have this opportunity. Oh, there's a little, I don't know if you can see, there's, there's a thing going on between these two guys. There's a, there's a shidduch, I love it, I love it. This is where it all happens, I have to tell you. So we are so grateful that you're joining us today. We are so thankful and, and we want to offer this moment for you to, to know that whenever your travels bring you back here, you are welcome here and we would love you to be with us and we want you to feel the embrace of our congregation as we sing the Sheikh Yanu. We thank God for bringing us to the sacred season for this moment and for this time. Please would you join us as we sing the Sheikh Yanu. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Sheikh Yanu Vekimanu Vehigiyanu Lasman Hazeh All the very best to Shabbat Shalom. And please, if you're able, please stay with us for a little bit after services end so that our guests, uh, friends in the congregation can greet you as well and, uh, and welcome. Shabbat Shalom. But don't sit. Don't sit. Be welcome, but don't sit. Join us on page 586 with the rest of the congregation as we turn to our concluding prayers. The Elenu, page 586. pause now to think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who have died at this season in years past, and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. During the period of Shloshim, we are remembering Belle Stein, the mother of Joyce Schachter, Joseph H. Altman, father of Karen Altman, Alice Goldman, aunt of Stephanie Singer, 
Sylvia Chambers, mother of Jeanette Chambers, Stephen Frankel, brother of Neil Frankel, and as of this morning, we are also mourning the loss of Rita Simon, who passed away early this morning. The funeral will take place at 3 p.m. at Mount Hope this Sunday afternoon. This marks a yard site and anniversary of passing for Minnie Altman, Marilyn Auerbach, Jean Blum, Earl L. Chapin, Hyman Cherkasky, Eleanor Serkin, Larry Frankel, Florence Friedland, Eleanor Gold, Sonia Cantor Handros, Bernard Herman, Philip Hewitt, Gloria Horwitz, Ida Levin Kushner, Harriet Fogel Lewis, Hillard, Hillard Mann, Faye Maxick, David Rosen, Harold Rosen, Jonathan Schroeder, Victor Silver, Morris Suntop, Hans D. von Perlstein, Rosemary Wittenberg, and uh, any, please, who you are holding in prayer as a yard site or, or within these last 30 days, please, if there is a name that you would add to either list for Shloshim or for yard site or a name better spoken aloud by you, please, as I look your direction, would you share that name aloud with us? May their memories be for a blessing as we join together on page 598 for the Mourners Kaddish. Yit Kadal Vid Kadash Me Rabba, Bail Madi Vrachirte Vyamlich Mahote, Bahaye Khon of Yome Khon of Haye de Hol Beit Yisrael, Bagala Visman Kiri Vim Ru Amin, Yehesh Me Rabba Me Varach Leolam Ume Almaya. Yit barach vish tabach vit paar vit romam vit nase vit hadar vit ale vit alal shmeid kudisha vrihu leila min kol birchata vshirata tush bechata vnechamata da amiran belma vim ru amen yehesh mama rabba min shemaya vechayim alenu vel kol yisrael vim ru amen o se shalom bim romav hu ya se shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael, ve'al kol Yoshevei Tevel, v'imru. Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all who are mourning, to all Israel, as we join together in saying, Amen. Amen. And please be seated. We want to thank Esther Brill. Give a wave back there, Esther Brill for being your greeter tonight. If you have any questions after services, please be sure to, uh, to ask Esther. We want to remind you that there are bagels and Bibles tomorrow, bagels and Bible, I guess it's singular, right? bagels and Bible uh, ongoing studies. You can come here tomorrow morning. Um, it will be at Temple Sinai um, for the foreseeable future at 9.15. No prior experience is necessary. All are welcome. And the texts are in English. Texts are in English, so if you have thought before, I'd like to try it, but I'm not sure, this is your time, just getting started. Um, next Friday evening is our annual Pride Shabbat service at 8 p.m. The speaker will be Dr. Emma Forbes-Jones, Building Nests, Supporting Gender Expansive Youth is her topic. Be sure to join us next week at 8, and, uh, and then the following morning again will be um, Bagels and Bibles. Bagels and Bible. <laughs> I have to be very careful because I'm speaking at a Presbyterian church on Sunday morning, and I have to remember it's Bible singular, right? Right, Bible singular, right? Join, join our congregation as we march together for the 2018 Rochester Pride Parade, which will be on Saturday, July 21st. We march together each year. Uh, all members of our community, we, we urge you to, to join us as an ally, as a member of the LGBTQ community, as, uh, as a supporter, as a temple member. Join us. We, we will meet around 12 
at the corner of Alexander and Park Avenue, which is where we line up, and then the parade itself starts about one o'clock. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful day to be a part of and support. Also save the day for Temple Sinai's trip to the Red Wings baseball game on Sunday, August 12th at Frontier Field. Please register at tsinai.org or call the office. Any announcements, any celebrations, any joys that you are celebrating that we should know?